Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about rotation motion and energy. So again, try to think of everything even though we're doing a rotation of motion, try to reference it with your knowledge of translation of motion, just because it's really important when you're learning something to reference it with something you already know. So a sphere that has inertia of 2 fifths mr squared with a mass of 28 kilograms, radius of 0.38 meters, is rotating with a constant angular velocity along the diameter of the sphere. If the kinetic energy of the sphere is 236 joules, what is the tangential velocity of a point on the rim of the sphere? So what we should know is, okay, we learned linear kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So now if something is rotating, it should be something similar. So the kinetic energy of something rotating is 1 half. Instead of mass, we're going to have the eternal inertia, rotational inertia. Instead of velocity, we're going to have omega, the angular velocity squared. Okay, and now so let's plug this in. Let's find out how fast uh, it's rotating. So we know 236 joules. That's the kinetic energy, one half. Inertia is two fifths m, which is 28 r squared, which they give us 0.38 squared. And now with omega, since we're looking for, hmm, yeah, since we're looking for velocity. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to change this omega. We know that omega times r is equal to the tangential velocity. And since we're looking for the tangential velocity, let's just change this omega to be v over r. So I'm going to change this omega to be v over r. And since they're both squared, we're going to square it. Now that we have this, we see that the r's cancel out. Sorry, I could have put 0.38 there, but it just shows it cancels out because they're both squared and one's a numerator, one's a denominator. And now let's just use our, let's do some math. So 236 times 2 times 5 divided by 2 divided by 28 and then square root. And we get velocity is equal to 6.49 meters per all right. All right. So now let's look at another example. From the fine diagram, a solid cylinder is wrapped around it and is pulled two meters. So it's wrapped around, pulled two meters uh, with a force of nine newtons. Find the cylinder's final angular speed and the final uh, speed of the cable. Okay, so this is a little bit interesting. Looking at this, we see forces, we see distance. And what you should be thinking about is your work formula. So you should be thinking, okay, work is equal to force times displacement times cosine theta. And it's also equal, the total work is also equal to the change in kinetic energy. Hmm. So you can say, okay, so this tension did a bit of work. We can see that the work it did was it did it applied nine newtons of force. It went two meters and same direction. So I'm not going to put cosine. And I can say this is the equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is one half i omega final squared minus one half i omega initial squared. But since it wasn't moving at the beginning, we can just say this is zero. So we can say 18 is equal to one half i, which is equal to one half mass, which is giving us 50 kilograms. And then we can do, oh, what, what are we trying to find? The angular, final angular speed. Okay, omega, no, m r, and r is equal to 0.06 meters, so 0.06 squared, and times omega final squared. So now we can do some algebra. Again, we got my calculator. 18 times 2 times 2 divided by 50 divided by 0.06 squared, and then square root of that, and we get omega final is equal to 20 radians Per second. Okay. Find the final angle speed and the final speed of the cable. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, so the cable. So the cable is going to be moving tangentially over here. So again, we can find. We know that the angular velocity times the radius is equal to velocity. So we know that this is twenty, and the radius. So it's going to be acting uh, 0.06 meters from the axis of rotation. So if we put that in. And then we plug that in 20 times 0.06, we get 1.2 meters per second. Okay. So we get one, 
1.2 meters per second. All right, next problem. A light rope is wrapped around a hollow cylinder, I equal to mr squared, with a weight of 40 newtons. Okay, um, okay, the hollow cylinder, got it. And a radius of 0.25 meters. Let me just get this. So I'm just going to say mass is equal to 4 kilograms. Radius is equal to 0.25 meters. That rotates without friction about a fixed horizontal axis. Okay, so rotating here. The cylinder is attached to the axle of the spokes of negligible momentum of inertia. Okay, the free end of the uh, rope is pulled with a constant force P. So we can see, looking at this, it's pulled here, force of P, uh, 5 meters, a distance of 5 meters. Okay, so it's pulled 5 meters, got it? At which point the end of the rope is moving at 6 meters per second. Okay, so after it moves 5 meters, it goes 6 meters per second. If the rope does not slip on the cylinder, what is P? Okay, so again, I think we're going to be looking at a lot of the same thing here. We're going to be looking at work is equal to change in kinetic energy. Again, we know the work is equal to force times displacement times cosine theta. So the force, we don't know. That's the force of P, what we're looking for. Displacement, we know it moves 5 meters. And we don't have to do cosine because we can see that the cosine... Uh, it's moving to the right, and the force is to the right, so it's the same thing. It's just equal to 1. So it's going to equal to 1 half I, which is uh, mass times radius squared. So mass, which is 4 kilograms, radius squared, which is 0.25 squared, um, and then omega final. Does it give us omega final? Uh, doesn't give us omega final. Omega final squared, and then times the initial kinetic energy, which is just zero because it wasn't moving at the beginning. One thing is, we even though we don't know what omega final squared is, what we can do is we know how fast it's moving uh, at the edge. So we know at the edge it's moving 6 meters per second. And as we learn, omega times r equals v. So v over r equals omega. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to change omega final, and I'm going to change it with v squared over r squared. And then I'm going to change this v squared, because I know it already. It's 6 squared. And I'm going to change this r squared, which is 0.25. And I see these cancel out. Okay, now that I know that, I can find what this force of the pulling is. Uh, with some calculus. First, I'm just going to solve for the other side. So 6 squared times 4 times 0.5 divided by 5, and I get 14.4 newtons. Okay. All right. Now let's look at this problem. This looks like more of like a conservation of energy problem because we see pulleys and things going up and down. So let's see how we can do this. A solid cylinder of mass 10 kilograms, mass 10 kilograms, and a radius of 0.7 meters, 0.7 meters, has a string wrapped around it that is attached to a block. The block has a mass of 2 kilograms, 2 kilograms, and, and when released, moves down a distance, uh, distance h, and hits the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Okay, and then it hits the ground 10 meters per second. Okay, knowing that, let's try to figure this out. So we're going to do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. And since it's the first one we're doing like this, I'm going to write it all out. I'm going to write all the energy we know. So we know potential, universal potential energy, plus we know kinetic energy, translational, plus elastic potential energy, plus kinetic energy, rotational. And this is going to be equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy translational plus elastic potential energy final plus kinetic rotational final. So at the very beginning, before it's released, does it have potential energy? Yes, it does. Does it have kinetic translational energy? No, it, it starts at zero, so that's going to be zero. Is there elastic potential energy? No, there's no elastic potential energy. Is it rotating? It's not rotating yet because it hasn't moved yet. So this just turns zero. 
So this all all three of these are zero. It has potential energy at the beginning though. And then at the end of there is there potential energy? No, it's out on the ground, so there's no potential energy. Is there kinetic energy translational? Yes, it's gonna be moving ten meters per second. Is there elastic potential energy? No, there's no springs or anything elastic here. Is there kinetic energy rotation? Yes, this pulley is going to be, or this solid cylinder is going to be rotating. So yes. So now we can simplify this as the universal uh, potential energy is equal to kinetic energy translational plus kinetic energy rotational. So let's simplify this. Mass, which is 2 kilograms, gravity, which is 10, height, which is unknown, that's what we're looking for, is equal to one half I. So this is, uh, what do they say, it's the solid cylinder? Okay, so this is gonna be one half, solid cylinder is one half MR squared. So one half mass of the cylinder, oh no, sorry, I forgot, this is just translational, so that's one half MV squared. So M is, the mass of the block is two kilograms, and velocity at the block at the bottom is 10. So 10 squared plus 1 half I. Uh, so I, again, is 1 half MR squared. So 1 half mass. And this is what's rotating. So the mass of this is 10 kilograms times the radius, which is 0.7 squared. And this is going to be equal to omega squared. Okay. So this looks a little bit complicated at first. So we don't know H and we don't know omega. However, we do know that when this hits the ground, it's going 10 meters per second. So that means this whole string is going 10 meters per second when it is uh, when it hits the ground. What that means is over here, it's moving 10 meters per second. And if we know what's moving right there 10 meters per second, we can figure out what the rotational speed is because we know omega r is equal to v, which means omega is equal to v over r. So I'm going to change this omega to be v squared over r squared. And I know v squared is 10 squared over r squared, which is 0.7 squared. 0.7 cancels out. And now I have, I'm going to simplify this. 20h is equal to, let me just put this out, 10 squared, uh, 100 plus, okay, let me, this one's a, lot, a bit long, 10 squared times 10 times 0.5 times 0.5, and I get 250. Okay, so now I can do a little bit of algebra. And I can see the height is equal to 17.5 meters. That should be high, is that the answer? Yep, 17.5 meters. All right, uh, okay, so last exam problem, and then we have a conceptual question after this. So the pulley in the figure has a radius of 0.16 meters. Okay, radius 0.16. Well, let's see, here's 0.16 meters. Do, 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 do. Uh, and the moment of inertia, so inertia is equal to 0.38 kilogram meter squared. Calculate the speed of the 4 kilogram black as it strikes the floor. Okay, so again, mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. This time, I'm not going to write everything out. I suggest doing that, though, if you're not used to it. But I know at the beginning... There's going to be gravitational potential energy by the 4 kilogram block. So I'm just going to UG4. It's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. Nothing's rotating, so there's no kinetic energy. And there's also no uh, elastic potential energy. So that's all we have. Later on, when this goes down, what we have is we're going to have this go up. So we're going to have gravitational potential energy by the 2 kilogram block. And now we're going to have kinetic energy translational because this one's going to be going down. It's going to be moving with a certain speed. But also this one's going to be moving up a certain speed. So they're both going to be moving up. There's no elastic potential energy. And this pulley here is going to be rotating. So we have also kinetic energy rotational. So this pulls one thing down and then gives energy to three other things. So now let's just kind of crunch in the numbers. So we have... M, 4, gravity, 10, height, 5, is equal to M, which is, this one's going to be 2, gravity, 10, and it goes up 5, plus 1 half M, which is, for this one, 4, V squared, plus 
1 half m, which is 2, v squared. Same velocity. This one's going to be going up, down with a certain speed, and this one's going up with that same speed. Plus 1 half i, which is given to us, 0.38 omega squared. Okay, so right now we have two unknowns, v squared and omega squared. But as we should be comfortable with now, we can change omega squared, and we can change it to be v squared over r squared, which is going to be 0.16 squared. All right, uh, I'm going to simplify everything because it's pretty, pretty crazy right now. But let's see how everything simplifies. 200 is equal to 50 times 2, so this is a 100, plus 2v squared, plus... 1v squared plus v squared plus, oh, this one's going to get a little complicated. So it's going to be 0.38 divided by 0.16 squared times 0.5. So this is going to give us 7.42v squared. So now let's simplify this. I'm going to bring this over. So I'm going to have 100 is equal. And I'm going to add all this up. It's going to be 310.42v squared. So 100 divided by 10.42, and then square root of that, and we get velocity is equal to 3.1 meters per second. Wow. Uh, I think that's because I've got the square root. Okay. 3.1 meters per second. Make a note of that. Okay. All right. So let's look at this last question. A ball is released from rest on a non a no slip surface. After reaching its low, lowest point, the ball begins to rise again, this time on a frictionless surface as shown in the figure. When the ball reaches maximum height on a frictionless surface, is it greater than? So uh, it starts from, sorry. So it starts from here. Is it going to be greater than where it was released, less than where it was released, or at the same height if it's impossible to tell? So over here, again, uh, there's friction, so it doesn't slip, so it rolls. And then over here, it's frictionless, so then it just slides up. And the question is, if it's released from here, is it going to go higher? Is it going to go the same height? Or is it going to go less? And so this is a little bit tricky. So as this falls, it, all, it has potential energy, right? And then as it falls, it gains kinetic energy, and it gains kinetic energy rotationally. However, when it reaches this point, that rotational kinetic energy isn't going to help it go up anymore since this is frictionless. So something is rotating, but it's frictionless. It doesn't help it move at all. So since it's losing energy to kinetic energy rotational, that means it won't go up as high, and it, uh, so it won't be able to reach the same height, okay? Because some of the energy gets lost to the rotating energy, okay? So at, at lesser height. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, great job if you're able to keep up and understand all of this or follow along. Thanks for watching, guys.